gigs in Hollywood were obviously through film yep. as a writer. Um, talk about the first movie you and Grant uh, successfully. Yeah, we got lucky. We had written some scripts that had sold and gotten us agents, and um, but we, they didn't get made. And then we were writing for, for Universal. We had written an FBI movie that um, that uh, September 11th um, happened and sort of uh, kicked that aside. But that summer, um, The Fast and the Furious had come out, and they asked us, because they liked our FBI script, they asked us, do we want to write the sequel? And we said no. And then, and then we just thought we were smarter. Than that. You like were above. We were, right? Yeah, we're above that. We were, and then our agent was like, "The answer is actually yes." And <laughs> here's, here's why that movie has a start date, and you guys haven't had a movie made, and and that movie's going to come out, um, and and it it means a lot for your careers to have a movie made. And we got very lucky because we wrote, um, so we wrote the sequel to The Fast and the Furious. And originally it was for Vin Diesel and Rob Cohen, the director, to come back, but Vin, for whatever reason, didn't want to do it. And, and so Rob dropped off and they hired John Singleton. And we just hit it off with John from the, from the, the first day. So we got And to, John Singleton sort of has some indie cred yeah. early in his career. Well, and he's awesome. He's just, a, he's just a cool guy. And so as writers on a big action movie, a lot of times you get fired. It just happens. They'll bring in three or four writers. There's no rhyme or reason to it. But John liked us. So we got to watch, you know, and I was, I was 30 at the time. We had to watch a, um, a uh, $80 million get made from, from writing the script to prep to shooting in Miami to post. And so it was really like, because I was in English, I got an Oscars in English, but I was, a, I was an English guy. And so to, that was my film school, was getting to watch the movie get made. And then, it, you know, say what you want about the movie, but it was successful enough that, um, that, uh, Was the title already in place? No, we called it The Best in the Furious 2 for, until three weeks before. It wasn't your idea. So no, it was too, too fast, too, too fast, fast, furious. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, to do a song, and so it became Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, and, uh, you know, it, as Michael and I say, it achieved its goals. Yeah. And then what we, what we, Found, which was true, and why our agent's advice was incredible, was that when you are the writers of a movie that that a, a sequel that got made, and then a sequel that got made, and made over a hundred million dollars, um, then all of a sudden you become in a small, really small pool of people that that studios want. And one of the things we did after we did a, a kids movie that nobody saw, but catch that kid right after that. Actually, we were making it during the post on Too Fast. But then Grant and I, who still considered ourselves fancy pants, uh, told our agent we want to meet filmmakers. Like, we, we want to do what we had originally set out to do. And so they put us in a room with um, Jim Mangold, who had done um, some movies we really liked, Copland and, and a movie called Identi uh, ID. And, uh, and he was in prepping walk the line, but we found out his favorite movie growing up was 310 Yuma, so we said we should modernize 310 Yuma, we could do, we could do, you know, set it in the old west, but, but thematically, the kid who's barely in the original movie, we could make it about sort of a morality tale about this kid's soul, and he's stuck between, uh, you know, an, a gunslinger and, and his dad who's just trying to put food on the table, and we, we said, those Nike commercials where Charlie, Char, Char, Charles Barkley said, I'm not a role model. That's, that's what we're going to do. Like, and so we pitched that to Columbia, and, um, and Jim was on board, and so we got 310 Yuma made. And so then, after Too Fast, it was successful. Well, let me interrupt for a moment. Yeah. Is there psychologically, so you didn't really want to make a sequel, sequel but yeah. you did. Is there anything about making a remake that uh, also had a stigma, or no? No, no. I, oh, I read the original um, Elmer Leonard short story first, and then I, I grew up in Texas, so I knew the movie, but then went back and watched the movie again. I had no problem. I mean, that movie was 50 years old, so. And that movie plays like, the original movie plays like a two-act play. So I, I kind of knew, and Brant, Brant really broke the middle of that movie. Um, we kind of knew what that story would be, but that opened so many more doors for us because now it was like we could do the, you know, the big, the big action actioner and, and the, the respectable, yeah, the respectable movie. So it's it's something to be said about career management and 
and not being put in the box.